Thanks, Sam. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so this presentation is synthetic identities and my upset point of view. My name is Timur Yunusov. Uh, I do upset for a living as opposed to Dan. Uh, so I was able to, I, I was doing upset since 2008. I was doing, uh, I was able to somehow hack ATM's point of sales, Visa, MasterCard cards, uh, Google Pay, Apple Pay, just staying within AppSec kind of black box approach. And today, obviously, my talk will be around about the AppSec specialist point of view on synthetic identities, why they are on the rise uh, here in the UK and in the USA. And a lot of people might disagree with, with my point of view. Yeah, like compliance officers will, will think differently. They will say, hey, this is, this is not correct. But I think that's, that's the whole point of this talk today, to be on the same page, to talk the same language. And uh, I really think that, I really hope that you all find something interesting in, in that, uh, in my today's talk. So exactly as Sam said, Back in 2019, OWASP, London meetup, uh, Revolut office, I'm showing how to hack banking apps. 2023, OWASP meetup, one's office, I'm showing how to hack banking apps. <laughs> Not much has changed, right? Uh, and don't get me wrong, I'm really, I really enjoy what I'm doing. Yeah, but... Uh, my results that in the last few years, in the last seven years, you know, since I switched to like uh, hacking uh, payment systems, all I got is just a bunch of angry vendors, a uh, bunch of customers that don't know how to fix or don't want to fix uh, things I report to them. And normally what I report is things related to money somehow, yeah, and uh, these problems are not even in top three priorities these days because the priorities for, for most of organizations will be extortion, ransomware, open AWS buckets, yeah, so uh, they, they mostly don't understand me and I realized uh, like a few years ago that I need to step up and start talking the same language with the companies I address the problems to. Yeah, so uh, today I'm going to show you my results along this uh, path of trying to talk the same language with the banks. So what I mean by talking the same language, well, first of all, obviously, as I said, vulnerabilities are everywhere. We have this vulnerabilities fatigue. Uh, no one cares about them these days. And basically what we need is we need to switch somehow from talking about like bugs, exploits, attacks to uh, more business level of like risks, threats. And if you are talking about banks, in my specific case, obviously uh, fraud. Yeah, and I was doing some kind of training workshops uh, that's called Bug Bounty in Payments for hackers, uh, telling them exactly the same thing, how to deliver uh, your findings and leverage your findings to the banks, to fintech for them to understand you. So I think that's a good time for a disclaimer. Yeah, opinions are my own. Not represent, do not represent or express uh, views of my employer, who mostly doesn't even know <laughs> my opinions on, on, on these topics. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, three types of organizations. Yeah, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And my ground rules are now, these days, I'm trying to ignore uh, bad and ugly who are not receptive, who don't listen to what, what, what I'm trying to say and work mostly with the good because there are plenty of them. And for the bad and the ugly, I, I don't actually have any problems with sharing findings that I reported to them and that they, they were later ignored because ultimately uh, it's like with zero days. Yeah, if zero days is actively exploited, 
uh, there is no problem for companies like Google Project Zero to publish more technical details about them for, for the great good, yeah, for the great good of the much broader uh, audience. But I still would like to say that it's quite an imperative not trying to violate the law, try not to violate the law for whilst whatever you do. Uh, and even if you actually try not to violate the law actively, it still somehow can slip and backfire. And I'm going to show you today uh, how this happens from, from time to time. So the good, the bad, and the ugly, not specifically in that order. Uh, when, when I moved uh, to the UK, uh, I opened something around 30 different fintech uh, apps, applications, accounts, uh, just to see what's there on the market, yeah. And um, <clears throat> some of them at times had bug bounty, some of them proved that there's no point of trying to interact with them. But I think exactly 2019 of us London, I was sharing the story about uh, Curve, a startup, that, and then my research called uh, How to Lose Money D During Payment Research, and they were quite bad at times. So raise a hand who knows Curve or who has a card of them. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's quite good, yeah. You have it just because I asked you to open it for me. It's really, really nice card. Amazing startup, I'm, 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 a, big, uh, I'm a big fan. Yeah, I don't have any beef with them, although I talk about them recently very often. It's probably too much, need to stop. Uh, so for, for, for people who don't have a uh, curve, the, the main idea is that you order a card, you add a bunch of your other cards to that card, and you choose from the mobile app which card to use for the next payment. And works great. Yeah, well, now they allow you to, to have only two cards attached uh, within the free free account, but still. Yeah, so that was amazing, amazing startup. I started using it a lot. And uh, after that presentation in 2019, they announced Bug Bounty, which lasted for six months. Uh, <laughs> Send a lot of things there. Uh, even, even I think I even got some money from there. But nevertheless, yeah, so, and, and that was just only the first sign of a really messy uh, InfoSec approach. So they had a constant rotation of the security staff. I've seen three CISO since then in, in, in their team. And I don't even have time to get hold of them. Yeah, by the time I, I send uh, some, something to them, they, they already have different teams. But I still try, honestly, yeah, so last reports I sent them was, I think, November. Uh, another thing that I have noticed, uh, there was an article in 2019 in Business Insider that claimed that uh, only 15% of Curve accounts uh, were, were ever used the Curve card, yeah, which was quite bad for, for their image. So what happened? is a week after that announcement, I got a notification in my Curve app saying, spend five pounds within the next month and we will send you back your five pounds or, or, or a tenner, I don't remember. I was like, wow, that's that's a move, guys. That's, that's a really move. Uh, and after that, they decided to collab with Samsung Pay. Who uses Samsung Pay? Raise a hand. <laughs> yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, that's 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 the that's the problem with Samsung Pay. Yeah, the the thing with wallet is that uh, if if you want your wallet like Apple Pay or Google Pay to work with your card, so your card can be added to this wallet, you need to have a that your bank will have an agreement with that particular vendor, and not many banks really wanted to have agreements with Samsung for some reason. They were thinking, okay, we have plenty, we have Apple and, and, and Google uh, white water. And uh, they struggled for quite a while, and they decided, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do a, a nice move. We're gonna make a contract with Curve, 
and every card you try to add to Samsung Pay, at this, you, if your bank does not support Samsung Pay, we will automatically enroll a Curve card, add your card to the Curve account, and here you go, you have a Samsung Pay, working Samsung Pay. Uh, that's, that's quite good, brilliant idea. Uh, but along this process, they completely wiped out the uh, formal QIC, know your customer, yeah, so uh, you don't need to send proof of address, proof of identity, any documents in that form whatsoever. So what you need is just enter your first, last name, address, and the date of birth, and you will either get a... Uh, approved uh, and already issued virtual card or or not if if uh, some database information doesn't match and uh, they call it a progressive QIC and progressive QIC means that this is going to work only until you will spend your first hundred or two hundred pounds uh, but obviously if you can get a hold of hundreds thousands of of uh, accounts first name last name date of birth uh, address. Uh, there is no limit of 100. You can issue as many virtual cards as you want. These days, they allow you not even to send the physical plastic to the original address, which is very handy. Uh, and yes, yeah, so ultimately, it's it's a really bad, shady practice, I would say. But 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 guys think that well, you know, it's not not a big problem. We still within the uh, compliance uh, requirements. So, what's the problem? Yeah, and, and and I was able just to find all of these things and and more just because I asked myself a question: How do I simulate fraud in in that specific organization? Yeah, because I really wanted to talk the same language with the bank. So I was never able to talk with them the same language. They just fix some vulnerabilities. Some of them are still. Uh, working and I just moved on. Uh, moved on to the idea of uh, anti-fraud threat teaming exercises. Yeah, so as many people are here, as many uh, ideas of what threat team stands for, I think there is. But for me, uh, red team, especially anti-fraud threat team, is uh, and the main difference between like Pentas or product security is. We see this, this financial organization and we break down to the ideas of like how exactly criminals can steal money from their organization and bypass their anti-fraud rules. Uh, and which is more important is that what bank have to do to stop this happening because if I can take a knife, go to CEO and just force him to send money to me, well, not much you can do uh, from the security standpoint against this threat, yeah. Uh, and so the whole idea for me was just like stop talking in, in terms of XSS and SQL injections, yeah, and, and run headers and start talking about like threats, attacks. Uh, related to money laundering. So, uh, but because we are talking about threats, like the first step would be threat intelligence. So I went to dark web, start looking at what uh, people are up to these days, criminals, what they do, uh, how they steal money uh, from, from banks. And at the times I did not know that actually the UK, one of the worst regions in terms of uh, QIC compliance, yeah. So uh, if you will have like one big European bank or fintech, uh, you will find on the dark web only offerings around the U about the UK. You won't find that they will open you a fake accounts or like uh, uh, saving accounts in Germany, for example, yeah, it's it's really something to do with, with compliance and, and like these uh, checks that are in place in, in different regions. But yeah, that's that's the case. UK, in that sense, across Europe is the worst. So uh, yeah, so I, I had a look what's going on, what, what banks are on the market, which apps I have, which security guys I know to reach out to them and start talking to them like, hey, do you, do you want this, do you want that? Uh, 
but uh, also want to say that the same things actually happens with uh, business accounts. Yeah, so three weeks ago, I was able to open a business account in one of the biggest payment processors in Europe, and I can take payments, receive payments to my bank details, and don't even know that I'm not even allowed to have a business entity in this country due to my visa uh, limitations. Yeah, not only I don't have this business account, obviously, yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is how messy things are uh, in, in some of the European countries. And, and I really like this guy, uh, Graham Barrow. He writes about uh, companies house, UK companies house mess constantly. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. Yeah, like Chris Elliott Zuckerberg, the guy who was born in 2002, opened and established in October uh, 2022 two organizations since Inst Instagram Limited and uh, Meta Platforms uh, Limited. And, 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 and he sends, he just posts these things day by day, every day. Amazing guy. Yeah, like Twitter, uh, LinkedIn. I highly recommend you. So uh, once I settled with with the customer I find out the customer who really uh, is keen and interest and interested in in what I'm doing uh, we sit and said okay w what are we gonna do and the first like natural idea was okay shall we buy this service from some guys of uh, dark market these fake documents or fake accounts and see how they do this, yeah, go, go through the process backwards or like do some shadowing or something. But it turned out that it's a dodgy practice and you can very easily get into prison just for that because of financing terrorism, because you, you never know where the money is sent, yeah, because you sent in crypto. Uh, so not not a good idea. Uh, and, and instead of that, I was like, well, okay, I have to... Uh, unwrap my Photoshop account, yeah, just use a little bit of imagination and see what to do, what I can do myself instead of buying some of ready uh, services of, of dark web. Uh, and by that time, I already realized that it will be quite useful to have some insights and I decided, okay, I also need to open a QIC uh, I, need, I need to open an account in one of existing QIC vendors just to see what's happening in the background because even with uh, the bank you completely agreed upon all the further works, you probably will have one or two attempts tops, yeah, because after that your, your account, your real documents will, will be banned. So yeah, that's not good. Uh, that was quite easy. I opened the account in one of QIC vendors, service providers, demo account. Uh, and because I am quite flexible in terms of I don't want to create a fake account for John Doe, yeah, I just wiped out a few letters from my first name and last name and I became Timu Yunus. Uh, which is still a fake, fake person, yeah, who never existed, never had a national insurance number, nothing. Uh, and yeah, I was really able to get away with this thing. So I uploaded the documents, all the checks went through, and I was like, okay, that's quite promising. That means that I probably will be able to open uh, an account with the bank. We agreed I will be able to open it. Yeah, but but the last problem is that here, obviously, I uploaded documents in uh, JPEG, where in the app, you need to take a photo, yeah, technically. Uh, so you, you, you have two cases. Normally, we are talking about like desktop apps and, and mobile apps. And desktop apps, quite easy. You have a bunch of software, even free software, that's called uh, virtual cameras. Yeah, a lot of companies try to fight with that, but ultimately, yeah, that's that's always loose. Yeah, whenever you try to check liveness on Windows or Mac, it's it's uh, there is no chance you can prove that this is exactly a live person who recorded something just in front of you a minute ago. Uh, we had company who were checking names of the webcams on the system and were like had their blacklist. So what we've done, we just renamed 
the camera to integrated camera instead of like other brand camera. And, and, and that was it, the, the, the check passed. I was like, wow, that's, that's bold. Uh, so obviously desktop is, is out of game uh, because, and, and, and obviously in most of apps you have the situation where if you are trying to submit uh, using desktop, you will, you will be mostly likely sent to use the mobile app. And there are two reasons for that. First of all is obviously the quality of the camera because in, in, in mobile phones these days, cameras are much much better than uh, webcams uh, but the second is yeah you have slightly higher entry barriers to tamper data on uh, Android or iOS and it's called it's something to do with device attestation so if you have proper device attestation uh, on the app, if you do not allow it to be run on jailbroken or rooted device, you have much higher chance for uh, to be sure that the data that comes from the camera is actually uh, the original data from the camera instead of this uh, Photoshop document. Uh, next step for criminals would be to actually create actual physical plastic. Yeah, they use uh, some very uh, well famous. Uh, printer brands for that, but I didn't have money for that. Yeah, so I, I I was trying to find the app that will allow me to upload my forged document. So I found that, that was nice. Everything went smoothly. I got money for the project and then I got a message that I got banned from uh, six banks at the same time. I was like, what is going on? So it turned out that uh, we had the agreement with the bank, yeah, that was good. Bank knew what I was doing, but they just forgot to mention that to the QIC vendor, uh, that uh, they were doing these red team exercises. And uh, because I was sending uh, real documents and fake documents, uh, this QIC vendor was quite vigilant and they added my real documents, my real driver, driving license in, in their blacklist and it's still he, there these days. So whenever I, I open a banking app, I always have a chance that your banking app is open and a minute after we get a notification. Unfortunately, we do not want to have anything to do with you. Goodbye. Uh, yeah, so after that, kind of kick in the guts, I decided to have some some break from from uh, opening, de dealing with fake uh, identities and uh, yeah, just had half a year, year break, not having anything to do with them. And at the times I was working with a quite talented uh, group of uh, data scientists. Yeah, they were not hackers, they were like, proper ML AI experts and we had our security AppSec expertise on top of them trying to navigate them and help them uh, doing some cool things, some cool research. So I really kept a very close eye uh, on everything related to deepfakes and suddenly I got this uh, uh, ad saying, hey, this is amazing defensive uh, deepfake offensive toolkit that creates a uh, deepfake live with your face and allows you to bypass, bypass liveness checks. Uh, only now I realize that there is like absolutely nothing, uh, they don't say anything about like how they actually implement this, like I implementing in, in, in invade in the pipeline, especially on the mobile app, but Nevertheless, I was like, okay, it's quite interesting. Let's have it. Uh, let's give it a go and try to uh, do something similar. Yeah, and even these days, it happens exactly the same. So this is an ad of uh, like one week ago, uh, where the guy is saying, "Hey, this is things that we offer. We can uh, we can create deep fakes in, in in real time. Yeah, it's quite good." Uh, have you noticed the problems with these videos? Yeah, they both have an appalling quality. <laughs> yeah, because uh, unfortunately, deep fakes, uh, real time deep fakes, are not as sophisticated and as good as people uh, post them. And that's what I realized during my last attempt. Yeah, so I found an app 
that allowed me to send as many requests to them as possible in order to create a video deep fake of supposedly not not me yeah so the the first thing i realized by that time already that i need to choose a person whose phenotype is very close to my own like facial features yeah if i will choose a, a fat blonde guy it's, it, it's not gonna work uh you, you don't need to be genius to to realize that uh second is well because i was working for my previous employer and i had some kind of budgets i was able to use not only open source tools but some commercial products so i paid for google collab pro for months which was really helpful uh bought a few other commercial products uh, instead of using trials yeah and uh, but again the the whole idea it all comes to finding an app that would allow me to send hundreds of these video requests to the systems and hundreds is like the minimum amount if you're talking about like manual uh, verifications made by humans if you're talking about uh, systems that are made with AI you are talking something about like thousands of hundreds of thousands of requests you will need to send to be able to, to bypass these things and uh, yeah so deepfake offensive toolkit nice thing uh from 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 the demo didn't work very well so this how these toolkits thinks uh, our offspring would have looked uh, uh unfortunately bank does not think that this is me so again what i was doing yeah i'm taking the video from this guy uh taking my photo and try to create video that looks much closer to myself and send it uh to verify my own account uh so yes he still does not look like me at all uh and again yes yeah, so facial features are quite important these people look even worse this is the guy <laughs> the same t-shirt uh this guy well also as you can see so so this is already a product of deep fake so this guy supposedly have my face on top of his but he still looks more like him rather than me uh so i took a step back and i was like okay uh let's try to take my own fake video my own video put my own face on top of that just to see maybe i will be blocked by that time maybe system somehow recognize deep fakes or s something like that yeah so i created these two things uh well y you can see this definitely looks like an edited video uh, on the second one, you also have some kind of artifacts, but this went through, the both were accepted. I was like, wow, that's, that's good. Okay, uh, coming back to creating deepfakes from, from this guy, uh, started using how it's called Deepface Lab, uh, amazing toolkit, really kind of like resource-wise uh, expensive, uh, so I had to use uh, Google Collab Pro for that, uh, and also by that time I realized that uh, small things are very important. Like, do you wear a glass? Do you, do do you wear glasses? Do you not wear glasses? Yeah, what kind of glasses? What kind of background you have? And because I had this flexibility, I was asking to the guy, "Hey, can you record the video uh, like with the white background? Uh, take your glasses off. I'll put my glasses on top of that." Uh, so, a couple tries. Uh, this mm, you see, not 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 the best quality. This this one this one was was the best product of mine and it still failed unfortunately uh and then after a few more tweaks uh i came to some genius ideas uh so i took i took my own photo created a video from a photo and then started to work on improving quality of that uh, of that video so these last two products uh actually were good enough to bypass verification in that bank. Uh, yeah, so that was quite good. Uh, it took me about a week or two, and then I decided to look at audio as well. Uh, I'm not sure will this audio work or not. No, okay. 
Well, that's just basically a very artificial robotic uh, audio at the background that obviously is not lip sync at all. And I sent it to the bank and the verification still went through. Uh, and you may know that just a few days ago, uh, Joseph Cox from Motherboard Wise published how they use uh, deepfakes to actually get access to uh, voice banking, which is, for example, widely used by HSBC. So my idea also was like a few weeks ago, let's let's try and do it. Uh, but this guy just got for us, so I, I, I don't see any points of, of doing that. So but 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 yeah it's it's absolutely feasible, absolutely possible to create deepfake from half an hour of my conversation here. Uh, that's on YouTube now and uh, get access to <clears throat> to my uh, banking account if if the bank supports uh, voice verification. So how many people of you just have this question on the background? What has it anything to do with an apps? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> uh, you probably don't listen at all. Uh, so if 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 you will uh, start from from the latest example, yeah, from the latter example, uh, timing attacks, yeah. So timing attacks, as you should know, it's where an attacker can gather some information based on how long it take for server to handle your request, yeah. And basically, it's quite similar to the cryptographic timing attack, where the same. Uh, information can be used to to uh, guess brute force uh, uh, and break break the cryptography. So this is exactly what I was doing in my latest example. I uh, determined that the system uh, was verifying uh, videos manually, so some people had to verify these videos manually because on the weekends. It took much longer to get response than on a normal day. And I was like, okay, that pro basically means that if it's verified by humans, I can send the same video again and again and again, and eventually I will be accepted. Yeah, and then I just got unlucky for a couple of times. Uh, I, I, if you talk about like much broader things, obviously device attestation. Device attestation is crucial. Yeah, in all three of these applications, everything started with me using rooted device launching these apps. If they would not be launched on rooted device, I won't be able to get so far um, or it would take me much, much longer energy and effort to get it done. Uh, trial and error, yeah, brute force, or I call it trial and error. Basically, again, if I would not be able to send hundreds of, well, I probably did like 50 to be fair, yeah, uh, this 50 requests to the bank, uh, if I would be banned from the first time and they would say, hey, we actually need to reach out to you and talk to you in person in order to unlock your account, I would not be able to, to get a success. In, in, in the latest attack, uh, information leakage, which is quite a familiar concept. Yeah, if I'm able to get access to these demo accounts of QIC vendors, I'm able to understand how they work, how they operate, what checks they do, what checks they don't do, and, and prepare uh, my attack. And uh, finally, replay. A lot of banks ask you to add random numbers, current date, or digits, at the end of your video or audio recording. Why is that? Uh, well, the whole idea is that no one can actually take your video, sorry, no one can actually take your video and then reuse it to get access to the mobile app like a week ago or two weeks ago, and this is fine. Uh, this is kind of protection against the replay attack, but at the same time, if the uh, pin that you need to, if these random digits you need to uh, say at the end would be valid for only five or 10 minutes, that would mean that I would not be able to create deepfake of 15 seconds or like even these three seconds where I uh, spell these digits in that time that I've been given. 
Yeah, because resources, I need much more resources to, resources to get it done. And no one was actually checking these things. So I, it's just basically the, last, the latest video. The latest video will require you to pronounce these six digits, which is, which is quite odd. Uh, and again, if you'll break it down to quite familiar to, I, I hope most of you, uh, all of us top 10 things. Yeah, we are talking about like broken access control and secure design. Uh, identification failures, yes, yeah, so all these things have something to do with AppSec. Well, it's just because I'm an AppSec guy. Yeah, and everything looks like an L for me. Uh, but really, at the end, what I would like to say today is we can and we should do better. Yeah, so uh, for, for companies, for vendors, I think it's really good to try start doing this red team exercises focusing on your actual risk and threats instead of bugs vulnerabilities and expecting uh, reports from uh, bug bounty uh, companies yeah talking about the bug bounty yeah do not launch bug bounty if you're not ready guys that's that's a wrong wrong thing to do uh, these guys were overwhelmed and uh, shut down six months later and they were not the one uh, I've seen three, four banks that have done exactly, well, not banks, fintech or neobanks. They have done exactly the same problem. Yeah, they, they were like, oh, how do we deal with this 10,000 requests about uh, XSS, self-XSS? Uh, and uh, yeah, application security is vital, uh, not only because uh, it applies to the same concepts across different domains, but also because if all you guys have as a fintech is a mobile app, is if everything else is in cloud outsourced and whatnot, you need to invest into your app. Yeah, you need to invest in security of your only major product. Uh, and, and for hackers, myself as well, yeah, we we definitely can do better in terms of delivering the findings uh, to the companies, to the affected uh, instances. Yeah, because even this presentation can be done much better, but we got what we've got, what we deserve as an industry. Uh, thanks so much.